Mexico is a country on the North American continent bordering the US to the north as well as Guatemala and Belize to the south. Mexico consists of 31 federal states and the capital district of Mexico City. With a total area of almost 2 million square kilometers, Mexico is the third largest country in North America, the fifth largest one in the Americas and about the same size as Saudi Arabia or Indonesia. With over 128 million inhabitants, Mexico is the world's 11th most populous nation and the world's most populous Spanish-speaking country. Apart from the official language Spanish, there are 62 indigenous languages that have been recognized as official languages since 2003. Mexico's largest metropolitan region by far is Mexico City with about 20 million inhabitants, followed by Monterrey with about 5.3 million inhabitants, not to be confused with California's Monterrey, and Guadalajara with about 5.2 million inhabitants. Puebla, Tlaxala, Toluca and Tijuana are also large metropolitan areas with populations of several millions. With over 12 million Mexicans living abroad, Mexico has the second largest diaspora in the world, only behind of the diaspora of India. A majority of these Mexicans living abroad live in the neighboring country to the north which is the United States. More than 82% of the Mexicans are Catholic and 7.5% are Protestant. Mexico is known for the old Maya and Aztec temples, for its many cathedrals, for its colorful small villages, for its beaches, its diversity in nature, for tacos and tequila, for its chocolate, but also for its high crime rates we will talk about soon. But as we will find out later, Mexico has much more than that to offer. The flag of Mexico shows three vertical stripes, green, white and red. These three colors are the colors of Mexican's Liberation Army. The coat of arms of Mexico was added to the flag at a later point of time. It represents a legend about the foundation of the Aztec capital Tenochtitlan in 1325, which is the predecessor of the Mexican capital city Mexico City. The Aztec capital Tenochtitlan definitely deserves it to be mentioned in more detail. Probably more than 100,000 people were living in the city when the first Spanish settlers arrived. With its high population, it was the largest city in the Americas and one of the largest ones worldwide. However, the city was conquered and destroyed by the Spanish. Almost the entire city is now covered by Mexico City. The few remaining ruins in the city center are now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Tenochtitlan was located on several islands in the western part of Lake Texcoco which lies in the valley of Mexico at an altitude of about 2240 meters. But the lake was drained by the Spanish and today does practically not exist anymore. It is not defined what the three colors of the Mexican flag stand for. In the past, green stood for independence from Spain, white for religion and red for the union between the Americas and the Europeans, while today green is interpreted as hope, white for unity and red for the blood of the heroes. The flag of Italy is very similar to the flag of Mexico. Ok, the list of Mexico's national symbols is very long, so let's go. The national animal is the golden eagle, the Sholowin's Quint Lee is the national dog, the jaguar is the national mammal, the grasshopper is the national arthropod, the vaquita is the national sea mammal, the ocelot is the national cat and the national amphibian is the axolotl. In Mexico, people pay with the Mexican peso. Mexico's economy is the world's 15th largest with a GDP per capita similar to other emerging countries like Brazil, China or Turkey. Mexico is the world's 12th largest exporter, with most of the exports going to the USA. Therefore, it is not surprising that the economy of Mexico is by a certain degree dependent on the economy of the US. Nevertheless, Mexico has lots of natural resources, especially crude oil. Steel production is also of importance. 
Thanks to continuous industrialization, a very young and growing population, an increasing domestic consumption and the geographical location close to the US, Mexico's economy has a lot of potential. On the flip side, corruption still is a problem that Mexico faces. Tourism plays a significant role in the Mexican economy. Since the 1960s, it has been heavily promoted by the Mexican government. Mexico is the second most visited country in the Americas behind the US and the world's seventh most visited one. In 2019, 45 million international tourists visited Mexico, over 10 million tourists came from the USA, followed by tourists from Canada, the UK, Colombia and Argentina. Mexico's main export partners are the US, Canada and China, while its largest import partners are the US, China and Japan. Later in this video, there will be an interview with Rafael, who is a Mexican citizen and will provide us some more insights into the country. And also, Rafael will give some useful advice to anyone who is interested in moving to Mexico. If you have an idea which country I should cover next, please let me know down in the comments. This video is part of a video series that covers informative facts and the migration procedure of many countries around the globe. I've created dedicated videos for countless countries worldwide, you can find the playlist linked in the description below. But let's return to Mexico. What are the main upsides of moving to Mexico and what needs to be considered? As of the 2015 UN report, Mexico ranks 51st among the countries with the largest foreign-born population. A bit more than 1 million people living in Mexico were not born there, but moved to this country during their lifetime. Unofficial numbers quote that there are not 1 million, but about 4 million foreigners living in Mexico. As of official statistics, the majority of Mexico's foreign residents are from the US followed by Spain and Guatemala. But what are the main upsides of moving to Mexico? The first advantage lies in Mexico's nature. Mexico ranks fourth among all countries worldwide in biodiversity and is therefore one of the world's 17 mega diverse countries. With over 200,000 different species, Mexico is home to about 12% of all of the world's species. To be honest, I didn't know Mexico was such a diverse country in both climate and nature before writing the script. Mexico is an incredibly mountainous country. If you laid out all of Mexico's terrain flat, it would cover all of Asia. Mexico is located on the Ring of Fire, which is why there are 42 active volcanoes and thousands of inactive ones. Mexico is also home to the smallest volcano worldwide called Cuexcomate. It is only 13 meters tall, compare that to the 4170 meter high volcano Mauna Loa in Hawaii. The climate certainly is another upside of moving to Mexico. The Mexican climate is just like its nature, very diverse. In the north of the country there are vast deserts, in the south savannas and rainforests, and in many parts of the country a pleasant Mediterranean climate. The warmest month in Mexico City is May, with daily average temperatures of 20 degrees Celsius, while the coldest month is January with 14.6 degrees Celsius. Of course, it can still get far warmer as well as far colder than that. But if you are someone who prefers a warmer, sunnier climate, Mexico is definitely a destination you should consider. Mexico is rich in history and culture. It is told so that every small Mexican village has a refreshing blend of the modern world and ancient traditions to offer. This allows you to visit so many structures, ranging from the Aztec temples to the cathedrals of the Spanish. Most towns have a civic or religious celebration every week. Parades and fireworks can also often be enjoyed. But then you'll also find hip art galleries and film festivals. Apparently, Mexico City has the second highest number of museums of any city in the world, after London. As the oldest city in the Americas, Mexico City culturally has a lot to offer. The National University of Mexico is the oldest university in North America. It was founded in 1551. For sure, the cuisine also contributes to the rich culture of Mexico. Mexican cuisine is characterized by the synthesis of indigenous but also European traditions. Corn, beans, chilies, 
fruits and certain types of vegetables play a dominant role in the Mexican cuisine. There are various regional cuisines in Mexico that differ significantly from one another. In the north of the country, the influence of the Spanish cuisine is stronger, whereas in the south, the indigenous cuisine has been more strongly preserved. The most famous Mexican dishes are tacos, enchilada, guacamole, burritos or chili con carne. But also chilaquiles, pozole or tostadas are famous. Sorry for my mispronunciation by the way. And there are many more mouth-watering dishes waiting for you to explore. Last but not least, the low cost of living is yet another upside of moving to Mexico. If you live of 3000 US dollars a month in Houston, Texas, you need about 1687 US dollars for the same quality of life in Mexico City. This means that the cost of living in Mexico City is over 43% lower than what it is in Houston. And if you are planning to settle down in another city of Mexico, you will for sure be able to save even more money. On average, the Mexicans earn about 10,500 US dollars annually. But besides of all these upsides, there are also some drawbacks that you will need to consider when moving to Mexico. The most well-known drawback is the high crime rate. According to the Numbeo Crime Index, Mexico ranks 37th worldwide by crime rate. But this makes Mexico only a bit unsafer than France or the USA. There are big differences within the country. Some regions are considered no-go areas, while others are completely fine. In some parts of the country, organized crime is a huge problem. So make sure not to visit these areas. It is important to do some research on which region of the country fits you best. Another disadvantage is the congested traffic in the the country's major cities. Let us continue with interviewing Rafael. Rafael even sent me some pictures he took from the Copper Canyon in the state of Chihuahua, which I will show in the background. Where in Mexico do you live and which regions did you visit so far? I live in the northern part of Mexico, in Ciudad Juarez, which borders El Paso and the United States. I have traveled through the northern part of Mexico, through the states of Chihuahua, Sonora, Durango, Sinaloa, Coahuila and Nuevo Leon. Which cities or regions of Mexico would you recommend people who are interested in moving to Mexico? People have many different tastes, so there's many different places to go. But overall, I would say to the region, central region in Mexico, to cities like Querétaro, Guadalajara, Mexico City, Cuernavaca, and of course to these tourist destinations as Puerto Vallarta, Cancun, or Playa del Carmen. What do you enjoy most about your life in Mexico? Personally, what I really enjoy about living in Mexico are the beautiful places. Well, the places I've gone to that are really beautiful and that really stand out are the Copper Canyon, the beach in Mazatlan, or the colonial buildings in the cities of Chihuahua and Durango. Of course, I must mention the food. My favorites are the tacos, the tacos de carnitas, uh, the burritos, the quesadillas, shrimp cocktails from like from Sinaloa, the fried fish, uh, mojarra frita, we call them here. What do you see a downside of living in Mexico? One downside of living in Mexico is that many places, some places can be very dangerous, especially because of organized crime. It's frustrating feeling uneasy when you travel to other parts of the country, but just as long as you don't attract a lot of attention to yourself and use your common sense, you should be okay. Another downside can be the economic situation. Many jobs are underpaid and poverty, especially in South Mexico, is common. What advice would you give people who are interested in moving to Mexico? I would advise people considering moving to Mexico to just uh, be careful when choosing a place to live in. Of course, there are many unsafe places. But still, there are many cities that are pretty, relatively safe and fun. There are activities to do and it's cheap to live in. And of course, Mexico is a really huge, diverse country. There's the sea, there's deserts, mountains, plains, everything. I would really advise, I strongly encourage people to consider moving here. And of course, as said with any other country in the world, you just need to be careful and make sound decisions when you live here if you choose to do so. 
thank you Rafael for taking time to join this interview. But what needs to be done in order to move to Mexico? Mexico allows visa-free entry for almost all European, North and South American countries, as well as Australia, New Zealand, Japan, South Korea and some more for up to 6 months. This comes in handy since it allows you to discover Mexico on your own before deciding to move to Mexico. This not only applies for tourist stays, but also for transit or business visitors. It looks like Mexico has a quite liberal visa policy in place. There are two principles in order to acquire Mexican citizenship. Either you are a national by birth or by naturalization. So if you were born in Mexico or born abroad by Mexicans, then you also become a Mexican national. If you are married to a Mexican citizen and have been living in Mexico for the last two years, then you may also apply for the citizenship. There are some more cases that allow you to acquire the Mexican citizenship. In case you are interested to know more about them, please take a look at the webpage linked in the description below.